Today we'll be presenting our pilot project. Uh, the project focuses on evaluating 3D technology for medical humanitarian applications. Pierre is a physiotherapist. I'm a biomedical engineer. Um, we were recruited by the MSF Foundation, uh, located in Paris. Uh, the foundation focuses on uh, funding and managing innovation projects like ours. We arrived in Amman in February 2017, last year, uh, to initiate the pilot project at the MSF Amman Reconstructive Surgery Hospital. For the past 10 years, the Reconstructive Surgery Project has been providing complex surgical operations to patients affected by conflict, primarily from Syria, Iraq, and Yemen. The RSP specializes in ortho, orthopedic, craniofacial, and plastic surgery, and also provides rehab care and psychosocial support for our patients. So what is this 3D project? Um, this 3D project aims to evaluate this 3D technology to see if it can have uh, any impact on the access to rehabilitation and prosthetic care on our field. The, um, the main thing about this project was to see if yeah, we can get this impact on, on, on specific patient population, neglected patient population. Among them, amputee population, uh, especially upper limb amputee population. On the field, we might not have any solution for this population. So we decided to uh, focus first, first of all, on below elbow prosthetic. So for patients who lost their arm below the elbow. And uh, the idea was to have a multidisciplinary action over the patient. So we have engineers, we have a rehabilitation professional as physiotherapist, occupational therapist, and prosthetic and orthotic clinician. And we try to define the needs of the patient and try to see if we can find a prosthesis, um, realize a prosthesis that can fit this, uh, this need. So I will briefly go through the whole process of what we are doing with the patient. So the first thing that we are doing with the patient is the assessment. Uh, we have the chance at the RSP hospital to have um, an occupational therapist since uh, mid-2017 uh, that is helping us on our uh, project. And uh, she's doing with our physiotherapist and the supervisor of the project now in Jordan, in Amman, uh, all those, uh, all the process with the patient. So the assessment aims to uh, find the um, needs that the patient have, like where are the difficulties, where are the challenges in the daily life of the patient, and try to see what kind of prosthesis and what kind of care we can provide to the patient. The second part is the first part of the designing of the prosthesis. So we are going to scan our patient. We have surf uh, 3D surface scanner, as you can see on the left, um, on the left part of the slide. And uh, we are scanning the stump of the patient, but also the sound side, if, if they are unilateral patient. So it helps us to design the socket, and which is here. So the socket, which is here, uh, which is the interface between the stump of the patient and the prosthetic. And the socket uh, is now fully digitalized and is completely created on the computer on this project. And the second part, which is the scanning uh, of, the, of the arm, aims to scale the, prost the prosthetic of your patient. So you can see this prosthetic, for example, uh, was done for the patient on the left uh, that was, uh, who wants to drive. Uh, and he was already driving, but he has difficulties. So we tried to make a prosthesis with a, a space between the thumb and the finger that can allow him to uh, catch the steel wheel and to release it uh, easily. So we're currently using desktop 3D printers, so not uh, very expensive printers. Um, we're printing in various materials. So we start with the check sockets and the check hands, which are printed in a readily available PLA material. We print them in thin shells to uh, conserve material. Once we have the final design, once the, the size of the hand has been validated, the fit of the socket has been validated, we go ahead and we print the final device. Uh, so as you can see here, and this was a system that was developed by our collaborators, uh, Limforge. At the, on the hands, you can see uh, we have a, a flexible TPU material. Uh, so this allows the fing fingers to flex. And then for the forearm and the connectors, we use the, the PLA material. And for the socket, uh, shown on the bottom here, 
Uh, this is a semi-flex copolyester material. So uh, throughout the process, uh, we uh, uh, tested many different types of materials uh, to reach these, uh, these final materials. So um, we've tried the prosthesis on the patient. Uh, the first are test prosthesis and test socket to check if the volume of the socket is good to the stump of the patient and also if the size of the prosthetic is uh, according to the anatomy of the patient. Once we are happy with this, uh, we, we provide them uh, another bench of prosthetics and that will lead to the, the final Plastic. But we also try to see with the patient if it suits uh, their expectation in terms of activity. So if we are speaking again to this, uh, about this patient who wants to drive, uh, here on the bottom uh, right of the slide you can see the patient trying to, um, to catch the steer wheel and when we were um, good with the prosthesis, we, we make him try to, uh, to drive with the prosthesis and he was pretty, uh, pretty able. So once we're uh, happy with the prosthesis, we check the alignment, we check the length of the prosthesis, and, and then we finally uh, will provide them the, the definite prosthesis. In between that, we start rehabilitation sessions. So the goal was not only to provide prosthesis, but also to accompany the patient into the whole process so they can accept the prosthesis and that we cannot still fit their needs. So we have a um, rehabilitation session now for uh, each of our patients. And uh, you can see some of this uh, activity right now. And then the final uh, device is here. So we, we paint the final device according to the skin tone of the patient. Uh, we have here one of the uh, device that we um, provide to one of our patients. It's a small, small device. It's, uh, uh, this one is a two and a half years old patient. And you can see that the, the stump is pretty, uh, pretty short. And we'll talk a little bit about after. The, the last part of the uh, workflow with the patient and one of the most important is the follow-up. So as we say, we are providing prosthetics, we are also providing rehabilitation and assessment, but we try also to follow them up during the time. So we are making assessments at 15 days, three months, and we hope to do some at one year to check if they can still use the prosthesis and, and if we can uh, modify what we are doing with them. Um, I will share with you one of these examples. So this little girl that you can see on this slide uh, was using an active system. So by active system means that the sum, which is right here on the left part of the slide, uh, was activated by this harness uh, through the, uh, the other shoulder. So she was moving the other shoulder, and then it was making uh, the thumb moving. And uh, we, after three months of using, uh, we, we figure out that she was not so much using the prosthesis for his active system. It's a little bit heavier and it's a little bit more difficult to use. And uh, so we suggest her to turn to a passive devices, such as the one that I just showed you, which is lighter, it's simple, and uh, we design a close grip, a close grip between the thumb and the finger that allows her to, to catch different things. So the result is now that she's using more this process. It's uh, lighter and it's more comfortable for her. So sometimes the solution is the easiest one. I share uh, also a second uh, case with you. So this little boy is a bilateral uh, congenital amputee. He's four years old and um, there is most of his activity we wasn't able to do by himself. Uh, so he, he learned how to draw with the prosthesis, but one of the most uh, concerning activity that he, uh, his parents and, and uh, he also wanted to perform was eating by himself. So we designed a very specific tool, which is short here, and uh, allowed to catch adapted uh, utensil for eating, and is now available, is now uh, able, sorry, to, uh, to eat by himself, which is a big win, because we are matching uh, once again, the uh, assessment and the need of the uh, patient. And that set new goals uh, that you can see on the left. And one of our main concerns now that we are trying to deal with the rehabilitation process with this patient is to make him change by himself the different tools. So he can use a hand for the drawing, but also by himself change it to uh, eat something. So along the way, we faced uh, several design challenges. Uh, with the post-processing, uh, we noticed that when we switched to the flexible hand, 
uh, from the initial rigid hand, the paint was starting to uh, break away. Um, so we uh, developed new paint formulations, um, as you can see on this, uh, this new hand, um, that uh, provided a more durable uh, coating. For the structural design, uh, we, we soon realized that not all PLA material is created equal. Uh, so we um, started using a, a stronger PLA material and also changed the design around. As you can see here, uh, we made a thicker shell on the forearm and uh, applied an internal um, reinforcement structure on the interior uh, near the connector piece. Uh, lastly, from the patient assessments, we learned how critical it was to get the aesthetics right. So initially, we were using uh, measurements that the clinicians provided of the, the hand. And uh, later, we also used the, the unaffected side and mirrored that to uh, the design we were scaling. And we were still seeing, as you can see at the bottom uh, right, that the hand just still was off a little bit. So then we went back to the drawing board and developed a new workflow with help from a volunteer industrial designer. As you can see from the 3D scan, um, even with a high quality uh, scanner, you still have, if you see in the blue, you still have holes and artifacts that you need to repair. And for me, this was a very time consuming process. And so we reached out to an industrial designer who is uh, used to sculpting, digital sculpting. And he was able to clean the scans in a short amount of time to generate um, a usable scan uh, that would be used to uh, generate the fi final prosthetic device. And it's important to note here that now we can create an exact mirror of their unaffected side um, into the device. So I will try to go uh, quickly among the results. Um, so after one year with seeing the patient, the, the first thing is that we could uh, fit some of our patients. So that was the first question, can we fit patients? So 13 prostheses uh, were given to 11 patients and nine are still using them. We know that nine of those patients are still using them. Uh, one broke and the patient uh, went back to his original country so we didn't get the chance to provide him a new one. And the second one, we don't have news as he went back to Syria. Uh, the second thing that I want to share is that at, few, at two weeks, uh, we had a, a satisfaction rate of among 90% with a validated tool. So two weeks is a bit short, so we hope to have um, uh, soon the, the result at uh, three months and hopefully next year at one year. The good thing is that those patients are using them. And the prosthesis uh, doesn't cost so much. Huh? As you see, the raw material is around 20 to $50, which is a fraction of the uh, conventional cost. So what we can conclude after this one year is, is it feasible? And the answer is yes, it's feasible. We can make this kind of prosthesis with all the capabilities on site. Uh, we can manufacture them, and we can tailor them to the, to the need of the patient. So uh, they are cost effective, the sounds also to be uh, lightweight, and they are comfortable uh, with the socket. Um, and uh, now for next year, uh, as we see that we can do it on site with a local team that is now continuing this project, uh, we want to see the durability of our next year, and also if it's possible to outsource some of the part of the process to do this prosthesis. Um, very quickly, we have other applications that we are looking for. Uh, one is burn mask and trying to see if we can use the scanning technology to uh, improve the, cap the comfort of the patient to make those burn masks for uh, uh, burn faces. And very quickly, we're also exploring uh, surgical applications, so providing 3D models that the uh, surgeons can use to educate the patients on the procedure, but also preoperatively plan their procedures. We're also working with um, a software company uh, to develop an automated uh, software for limb deformity correction. And these are some of the other applications we've explored throughout the first year. Lastly, we'd like to acknowledge everyone that's been um, involved in this project. Um, there's been, uh, uh, Pierre mentioned the local team, the reconstructive surgery project and hospital, and Amman has been incredibly supportive. We've had many individual volunteers, <laughs> clinical collaborators, as well as technical collaborators, and we thank you all for your uh, generous support. And MSF Foundation and everyone, thank you. <laughs>